At a time when Neolithic settlements based their very existence on an agricultural economy, it was only natural for inhabitants to turn to the exchange of goods among themselves or barter trade in order to cater for their various needs. Of course, this kind of trade presented certain problems, and soon a common denominator was sought through which they could carry out their transactions. One such unit, as mentioned by Homer, was cattle. The discovery of copper and the realization of its usefulness and value led to it being used by ancient peoples as a numismatic unit. It did not take long for Cyprus, rich in copper ore, to be established as the most important source as regards mining and processing of the precious mineral in the ancient world. The concept of mining came to Cyprus from the Hellenic world. The first Cypriot coins were of solid silver and were made by hammering a silver disc between two engraved mitres. In this way, the patterns on the mitre would be transferred onto the coin. The first Cypriot coin was minted by Evelthon, king of Salamis, during his reign, and depicted a reclining ram. The king's name was written in Cyprosyllabic script and continued to adorn the coins of Salamis during his successors. During the period in question, Cyprus was under Persian domination, leading to the numismatic system being followed, being similar to precisely that of the Persians. Coins, however, were also being minted in other city kingdoms of Cyprus, each one of which had its own symbols. Paphos began minting its own coins as of the end of the 6th and beginning of the 5th century BC, and, as a rule, their iconography features the eagle and the bull. During the 4th century BC, the goddess Aphrodite also appears on Paphian coins. Citium, which had been subjugated by the Phoenicians, minted coins bearing Phoenician inscriptions. One side of the coins depicts Heracles, or Hercules in Latin, and the other a lion. Amethyst, considered the kingdom of the indigenous inhabitants of Cyprus, began minting coins between the 5th and 4th centuries BC. One side of the coins features a reclining lion, and quite often an eagle hovering above it. The other depicts the bust of a lion, mouth wide open. The coins of Idalion, in addition to the name of the local king, also feature the name of the city. Other city kingdoms such as Soli, Marion and Lapithos also minted their own coins. The first gold Cypriot coin was minted by Evagoras I, king of Salamis, in order to bolster his domain's finances. In addition to minting the island's first gold coin, Evagoras I also introduced to the island the depiction of Hellenic gods and demigods. Evagoras's coins are the first on which the initial letter of the king's name in the Greek alphabet is imprinted. The Persian domination of Cyprus ended with the prevalence in the eastern Mediterranean of Alexander the Great. The Cypriot kings joined ranks with Alexander, albeit maintaining their autonomy, even though their mints were placed in the service of the Macedonian leader and adhered to his numismatic system. Alexander's silver coins depict himself in the guise of Heracles on the obverse, while the reverse features Zeus, god of all Hellenes, holding a scepter and an eagle. Following the death of Alexander the Great, Cyprus became a bone of contention among his successors. With the prevalence of Ptolemy, the Cypriot kingdoms were abolished, and the island was incorporated into the Ptolemaic state as one more province with Paphos as its capital. Its numismatic system was adapted to Ptolemaic standards with Ptolemy's visage dominating all coins minted during both his and his successors' reigns. Cyprus's first Roman period coins were minted in 27 BC by Augustus Caesar. These were made of copper and bore the emperor's bust on the obverse with a depiction of winged victory on the reverse. During the reign of Claudius, 54 BC, 
copper coins with the inscription Kinon Kiprion, surrounded by a laurel wreath, first made their appearance on the island. The Kinon Kiprion was established in the 2nd century BC as a guild of delegates from all Cypriot cities, and its character was of a purely religious nature. The first Byzantine coins of Cyprus were minted circa 610 AD by Heraclius at Salamis, which by then had been renamed Constantia. In 1184, the then governor of the island, Isaacius Comnenus, taking advantage of the weakening of the Byzantine state, proclaimed himself the independent despot of Cyprus. His coins, most probably minted in Nicosia, adhere to Byzantine standards and were either concave or flat. In 1191, Cyprus fell into the hands of Richard the Lionheart of England, who was at the time taking part in the Third Crusade. Richard sold Cyprus, first to the Knights Templar and then to Guy de Lusignan, who proceeded to establish the Lusignan dynasty, which ended up ruling the island for 300 years. Guy de Lusignan introduced to Cyprus the numismatic system of Jerusalem, with which he was accustomed, while at the same time he continued the minting of bezants, the par excellence coins of the Byzantine Empire. Both bezants and dinars were in circulation in the Kingdom of Cyprus until the 13th century AD, when the then king of the island, Henri II, brought about radical changes to the island's numismatic system in order to align it with that of the rest of Europe and introduced a new silver coin, the Gross. It was during this period that Cyprus became one of the most important centres of the Mediterranean and experienced great wealth, which, of course, was enjoyed only by the island's non-Cypriot overlords, with the indigenous inhabitants of the island living in conditions of oppression and slavery. It was this climate that Peter I of Cyprus exploited, selling freedom to many serfs in lieu of a generous fee in order to fill his state's empty coffers. The coins minted during his reign show him holding an unsheathed sword instead of a scepter. With the passing of Cyprus to the Venetians, the island's numismatic system was adapted to that of the Serene Republics itself, while the minting of new coins was undertaken by the Serene Republic's central mint. The first copper coins minted bore the Lion of St. Mark, and they continued thus until the conquest of Cyprus by the Ottoman Turks in 1570-71. During the Siege of Famagusta, Gold and silver coins disappeared from circulation, and in order to satisfy the needs presented by his troops, the Venetian governor of Cyprus, Marcantonio Bragadino, proceeded out of necessity with the minting of copper coins. These were of a nominal value of one bezant and were to be exchanged on a one to one basis for silver coins after hostilities ended. During the long period of Ottoman rule, the new conquerors introduced their own numismatic system. Minting, with the exception of a small number of 17th century coins, was carried out at the Constantinople Mint. The main coin was the Akche, a small silver coin which in Greek was called Aspro, or white, because of its colour. In 1620, the silver para and the kurush a coin which in Greek was called gross and equaled 40 para, entered circulation. With the arrival in Cyprus of the British and the ensuing change of administration, all foreign coins were withdrawn from circulation in order to implement the new colonial numismatic system. The colonial administration's first copper coins were put into circulation in 1879 and had values equaling one, one half and one quarter of a gross. In 1901, silver coins were minted, which on one side featured the bust of Queen Victoria, 
and on the other a crowned shield with the English lion. During the reign of Elizabeth II, the gross and the shilling were abolished and were substituted by the mill. In 1960, Cyprus became an independent state, but the first coins issued by the Republic of Cyprus did not appear until three years later. The numismatic system remained the same as that which had been enforced during British colonial rule, but the coins and banknotes in circulation following independence now depicted scenes from the history and culture of Cyprus. In 1983, the island's numismatic system was amended, and the cent, 100 of which make up one pound to this day, substituted the mill, or the until then one thousandth of a pound. Through the ages, Cyprus, given its geographical position, repeatedly found itself at the centre of clashes and conflicts with and among peoples both neighbouring and distant. Many of these succeeded in conquering the island and becoming, for months, years or centuries, the island's rulers and sole exploiters of its wealth. The conquerors each introduced their own numismatic system, and through these coins we, today, can glean information concerning kings, despots and governors who passed through Cyprus and left their own mark on the history of the island. The people of Cyprus, oppressed and financially exhausted through heavy taxation and levies, had nothing with which to face the conquerors except their civilization and culture. And it's this civilization and culture which served as the passport for Cyprus's accession to the greater European family, leading to the opening of a new chapter in the island's history.